Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Michael Shields, a technical consultant for Elenco Animal Health. So Dr. Shields, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for having me today. Um, I'm a technical consultant at Elenco. Uh, I live in Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, before joining Elenco, I worked as a swine nutritionist and business analyst with Cactus Feeders. And um, before that, I was a nutritionist with Cape Fear Consulting here in North Carolina. I got my uh, bachelor's, master's, and PhD all in animal science and swine nutrition at North Carolina State University. Through continuous innovation, trusted solutions, and accountable insights, the Lawn Co. is invested in helping you achieve the full value of every decision. Their portfolio offers solutions to manage disease challenges, minimize variation, and mitigate mortality to optimize pig health. Awesome. So I read that study uh, you sent us about doing a meta meta regression analysis evaluating the efficacy of an ionophore in grow finished pigs. Would you mind telling us about that study? Yeah. So going back to so the the objective of the study, um, in essence, was just to evaluate the effects of of skysis inclusion on grow finished pigs. And we wanted to predict the response and average daily gain, feed efficiency, and carcass yield. So we took all the data from from internal and external studies. Uh, most of that data was peer-reviewed or published either in an abstract or a peer-reviewed journal. Um, that data was from 2012 to 2021. So it was 21 studies, 308 observations, looking at individual growth period data and overall data. And so we looked at the response criteria of that was control versus Narison, and then we calculated uh, the percent change in that uh, um, data. So the data we recorded, we looked at year, length of trial, um, feeding duration, what the diet, how the diet was composed. We looked at Narison level, um, sex, initial and final body weight. And then for growth performance and carcass characteristics, we looked at your, your general methods, which was gain, feed efficiency, feed, um, gain, sorry, feed intake, feed efficiency. And we looked at hot carcass weight, yield and back fat. And so uh, when we built the model, we looked at the response variables of average daily gain, feed efficiency, and carcass yields, and we used two different models. We had an individual growth period model, which we summarized the data uh, during the growth period. So that would be weigh periods, for example, from 7 to 35 days, or we looked at overall trial data. And so this was using complete data sets, including uh, feeding Narison for full duration um, or data represented uh, without Narison uh, feeding between 35 and 116 days. So with that, we got a range of responses. So we looked at, we, we ended up looking at the data uh, feeding Skysis uh, greater than 65 days or less than 65 days. That sort of provided the, the most consistent output. And we saw that when, when, you, when you did that or fed Skysis longer than 65 days, you would get a range of predicted outputs based on the control inputs of uh, feed intake or average daily gain or, or gain to feed. And then you would get a range of outputs uh, for average daily gain between 1 and 1.3% average daily gain or 0.6 and 1.1% feed efficiency. And the carcass yield response was pretty much the same um, throughout if you fed longer than 65 days at 0.31% um, yield improvement when feeding skysis versus the control. Gotcha. So when I was reading uh, the study, it mentioned that um, narasin increases like propionate, propionate production. Um, so does it just do that by killing off like less beneficial bacteria, which leaves more room for um, those bacteria to grow? And then also to kind of follow that, um, which bacteria exactly does it like target or an inverse, like increase the population of? Yeah, so autophores have been around for a long time. I mean, the remit, Elenco's had remincin, and then it's been involved in poultry as well as as Montiban. So, um, the the mode of action of an ionophore is basically it attaches to gram positive bacteria, and you have an influx in sodium ions, which uh, changes the um, the cell then tries to maintain I osmotic balance, and it pumps out potassium ions, and then basically it, it the, the cell is is killed. So basically, you're left with more gram-positive bacteria. So the waste gases of these gram-positive bacteria is propionic acid. So propionic acid is able to be more efficiently used as energy by the animal, 
which is why you would get the average daily gain and feed efficiency response that you would see um, with skysis in the in the diet. Gotcha. And the other question I had, so from a like supplementation or implementation standpoint, what is the the general feeding strategy? Is there like an ideal amount that you add? And if that is that depend on other factors and also is it better to like add this um, early in the finisher or late in the finisher or what's kind of like the general recommendation there? Yeah, that's a great question. So Skysis is labeled from to be fed from 15 to 30 parts per million. So that's 0.3 to 0.6 pounds per ton. Um, and so all the vast majority of our data at Elenco is with the low dose or 13.6 grams per ton. We've seen some success lately in, in the higher dose at 18.1 or 27.2 grams per ton. But the label states that you must feed Skysis uh, in grow finished pigs for 28 days, uh, continuously at 28 days. We found in our research that the longer you feed Skysis, the better the better response you'll get. And a lot of that response uh, and, and that return will come um, based for the yield. So if you get a more yield more yield at the plant, you'll you'll have a heavier animal, or, or that animal will convert a lot better. So that's why. We say feed Skysis for longer than 65 days. Um, you know, all of our data would show, uh, or not, a lot of our data would show an improvement at with 13.6. Uh, still a lot to be learned about 18.1 or 27.2, but we have a lot of customers that that use that and and uh, for uh, mainly for help with feed conversion. L Biotics, the pioneer postbiotic for digestive health in pigs, brought to you by Adair Biome. With over a century of experience in postbiotics for digestive health, L-Biotics contains heat-treated lactobacillus cell bodies and their metabolites. Stable by nature, L-Biotics can be easily stored and incorporated in compound feed. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and uh, sharing all this data with us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Yep, and to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Oh.